Hi everyone, it's Kirchie. I haven't made a crafting video in a while, so I thought that I would combine my love for Halloween, which is my favorite holiday, and my love for Polly Pockets, which is my favorite toy, and create a Halloween-themed Polly Pocket. I found this wooden coffin at Michael's. This is $2.99, and on the front here it says paint me. So this is just begging to be painted and transformed into something more creative. And when I opened it, I was immediately inspired to create a Polly Pocket because the interior is just perfect for little miniatures. This video is also special because it is the first video in a new series I'm starting where I find random things and I just give them a makeover, my own personal creative twist. And the point of this series is to keep myself creative. I love creating stuff and I love showcasing my collection but I also want my channel to be a creative channel and I just want to make really, really cool stuff. That's what I'm all about. So let's get started and turn this super plain coffin into a spooky Polly Pocket. This is what the wooden case looks like. It's just made of wood, maybe balsa wood. I see this kind of stuff all the time whenever I go to craft stores and I've always wanted to do something with them. Since it's Halloween, I want to do a gothic vampire theme. I shocked myself when I chose this theme because I don't like vampires and dark aesthetics aren't really my thing, but I also want to challenge myself and make something I've never made before. I'm not really loving the clasp too much. I think it looks cheap. The hinges also don't stay at a 90 degree angle, but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna start by painting the entire thing black. This is really fun to do because I can just go all out without worrying about staying in the lines. I was also anxious to cover the entire thing in black because the wood just looked really cheap and plain. I only did one coat, which was more than enough. After I painted the hinges and clasp, I realized it was a total mistake because the paint was peeling off. So I decided to remove them completely and replace them later. For the design, I sketched them out on my phone. Here you can see my layout and furniture ideas. These were just rough sketches to establish my vision, but there's gonna be a lot of improvising along the way. I also took measurements of the coffin and I had to measure every single side, top to bottom, and all angles. I'm not much of a numbers person, so this part was really boring, but very important. This is where my graphic design background comes into play. On Adobe Illustrator, I designed the wall and floor pieces. Since it's a vampire theme, I wanted gothic designs with dark reds and blacks. So here they are printed out and I took a black marker and just colored the edges so the white paper doesn't appear. Now I'm gonna start gluing the graphics inside the coffin, starting with a wooden floor. I'm pressing down with this tool to make sure the edges don't lift. Then I glued all the wall pieces to the side and pressed them down as well. It's really satisfying seeing all these pieces come together. I realized I should have painted the back of the paper black, but no worries because I can just paint over them like I'm doing here. And now this looks much better. For the second level, I did the same thing. I attached the biggest piece first, which is the hallway, dungeon, and bedroom. I designed several more pieces here, which will divide the rooms. I'm gluing all of these to the walls just like I did on the first level. For the big divider, I glued two pieces together so they're extra thick and attach them in the middle of the coffin. Super glue is a hot mess, so I'm just using a Q-tip to clean that up. Same thing with the dungeon divider. I glued two pieces together and attached it between the two rooms. Going back to the first level, I created an archway, which really ties this room together. It also helps separate the front door from the main room. That made a huge difference, and you can imagine your miniature self walking through that archway. Now for the hard part, the staircase. It took me several tries to figure out how I was gonna build this. Ultimately, I decided to go with old reliable polymer clay. I rolled some sheets of black clay and I'm layering them to form a staircase. I cut them to size so they fit the compact and there you have it, two cute little stairs. For the landing, I stacked sheets of clay on top of each other till I achieved my desired thickness. I cut them to size again so they match the measurements of the compact. And here's just a plain rectangular block for the landing. With some super glue, I attached the landing to the back of the lower level. It's so satisfying how snug it fits in there. Meanwhile, I designed and printed the railings and attached them to the sides. And now the little stairs can go in. I attached them with super glue right in front of the landing. Here's the hardest piece I had to design. I folded the sides and attached it in the middle of the stairs. Finally, I designed another wooden flooring piece and attached it to the landing. And here we have a beautiful gothic staircase. We can't have a vampire mansion without a long, gorgeous rug. So here's a rug piece I designed 
and I'm going to attach it right in the middle of the room. We still have a long challenge ahead of us because I have tons of little furniture to make. Starting with a couch, I took some red clay sheets and cut them to form a small rectangle. I'm adding couchy textures with my needle tool. For the arms, I cut more tiny rectangles and attached them to the side, making sure they're scaled correctly. Same thing with the back of the couch. I used an X-Acto knife to give it a shelled shape so it looks more fancy. Of course, we have to have lounge chairs to match. I'm making two little ones with the same method of cutting rectangles and attaching them together. A lot of design and sculpting is really all about taking basic shapes and putting them together to create a bigger picture. I also gave the back of these a nice curved design to match the couch. Now for the many, many, many candles. I rolled out a thin piece of red clay and cut tiny cylinders of different heights to create a group of candles. I also wanted a few candles to hang on the walls so I made these ones with a little base to hold them. The flames were difficult because they're super tiny and my long talons don't really help, but I'm all about my nails, especially these dark vampiric ones for Halloween. That black bowl that magically appeared is going to be a blood well. That's right, it's a well filled with blood. Why? Because vampires, that's why. Lastly, I'm cutting more teeny tiny pieces, which will be the legs of the couch and lounge chairs. Do vampires even sleep? Doesn't matter, because I'm making a bed anyway. In almost every Polly Pocket Compact, there's a bedroom, so I thought I'd do that here too. Again, I'm just cutting some basic rectangles to form the bed, and giving the bed frame the same curved design I did for the lounge chairs. To top it off, I made this teeny tiny pillow. Next up is the bookcase. This is another one that took me several tries. It was really hard getting the scaling right for this entire project. The last bookcase I made was way too big, so this time I'm going way small. I'm giving the illusion of lots of books by creating vertical marks with my blade tool. And here's the bed and bookcase. I decided to add more furniture to the bedroom, so here I am making a closet and drawer. Again, all about simple rectangles here. The secret is in the measurements to make sure all the pieces fit together. And here are the super tiny handles that I attached as a finishing touch. I made this table earlier using a small round cookie cutter, and now I'm making the legs. I wanted to do some kind of snaky legs. Vampires are into snakes, right? Again, this is another one of those hard to do things when you have long nails, but I managed to do it. Now for the candelabra, which is a word I learned literally yesterday. It's a fancy candle holder that holds, you guessed it, candles. I wanted to create a giant one that will go in the hallway. This one was easy to sculpt because it was flat instead of 3D. I used the same red so that it matches the other candles I made. For the dungeon stuff, I made some chains which would hold the prisoner these vampires are keeping captive. Maybe they captured them so they can gather their blood for the blood well and drink it later. I'm so sorry if I offend any vampires out there. I'm just using my imagination here. I'm making some bones which are the remains of the captive. Maybe human bones, maybe not. I don't want to get too creepy here. Here are a couple of bones and a skull. We can't have a dungeon without rats, so here I am making a little rat friend. He's a nice rat who just loves to explore. And here are the adorably creepy dungeon pieces. As a decorative piece for the entrance, I'm making a red geode, which my camera failed to capture because my battery died, but here's what it looks like. And just a couple more red skulls here for decoration. They're guarding the soul stone. Now for the assembly. I'm gluing all the little pieces together, like the base of the blood well and the legs of the couch. All these little details really help make this imaginary world a reality. Moving on to the exterior of the coffin, I'm making my own version of a clasp. I love gems, so I'm adding the sparkly red heart gem in the middle. Vampires and bats are best friends, so I'm making giant bat wings to go on the front of the compact. I rolled out a sheet of clay, cut the wing shape, and rolled out long pieces to create the bone structure. The same method can be applied to dragon wings too, and of course, changing the colors will add more style. For these, I'm going with black since they're bat wings. Now it's time to paint all the things. I'm also giving the couch an antiqued look so they don't look too cartoony. Same gold paint with a candelabra. I'm also adding details to the candle flames to give them a more fiery look. I'm just going around adding more paint and details to the rest of the furniture, making sure they're all cohesive with one another. Adding the gold here and there will really help unify the entire aesthetic. Now that the bat wings are cured, I'm going to give them a dark silver metallic paint. We can't forget the varnish. I'm adding a coat of glossy varnish on the coffin to make it shiny. I also did the same thing for the furniture off camera, so you'll see super shiny furniture later on. As a bonus, I decided to make a book of the dead because these vampires need to summon the undead. This book is also larger than the ones on the bookcase, but I did that on purpose because this book is special. It looks like a slice of cake. Now I'm adding some decor to finish off the design. And finally, the fun part, adding all the furniture to the compact. Using super glue, I'm attaching all the furniture where they belong. Before I did this, I set them in place first to make sure I like how they look. 
Once I was happy with it, I started gluing. I like things to be symmetrical, so I'm making sure everything is aligned neatly. I'm not much of a chaotic designer, which is fun, but for me, I prefer neat and orderly designs. Putting the furniture in place was so satisfying because I can really see the entire look come together. It feels like I'm inside the compact living in this vampire mansion. We can't forget about the hinges. I ran to Miner's hardware store and bought these black hinges perfect for this compact. The screws were too big, so I decided to glue the hinges instead. For the clasp, which isn't really a clasp, I glued the two halves of the circle, then glued the heart gem on the top part only. That way, when it opens, it looks like this. I designed yet another graphic piece, which will be the cover of the compact. It has the same pattern as the walls inside the compact. I attached the beautiful bat wings and topped it off with another sparkly gem. And here is the final result. Here is the front. This is the little metallic effect that I wanted to achieve. The gems also turned out really nicely. I love that I was able to pull off this opening mechanism right here because I thought the heart was gonna get stuck somehow, but it worked out and I'm super happy. I love how it looks. Now for the inside. Again, I am super happy with how everything turned out considering it was my first time and it was pretty difficult to sculpt little miniature furniture. I'm not really much of a 3D sculptor where I had to kind of figure out how the back would look, the front, the sides. Normally when I used to sculpt, it's just very flat, just like this candelabra right here. That's definitely a lot easier because you don't have to worry about the sides and the back. And of course, things aren't 100% perfect. I'm not sure I like what I did with the gold on the side there too much. The chains in the dungeon also don't look much like chains and they look a little too shiny so I probably could have antiqued it a little bit. I would have also liked to add way more furniture, way more details, but because of the time I spent making this and also the difficulty making all those little items, I decided to just go pretty minimal for now and just add on in the future. My favorite part is the bottom with the living room and the little Book of the Dead right there. It just looks like a real cozy living room where you can actually imagine yourself chilling and perhaps summoning the undead. I also love the staircase because it was the most difficult one to make. Just the logistics of it, figuring out how to fold the paper, how to print the designs. As far as proportion goes, it is definitely way off. The book is gigantic and the candelabra, of course, super giant, but that's my suspension of disbelief because this is a toy and just a creative project that I really wanted to do because Halloween is my favorite holiday. Now to test it with little Miss Polly over here. I chose her because she has gold in her outfit, which matches the little gold embellishments I have here. I think she fits pretty okay on the couch. She's not in there all the way because the space is too small, but it works and she is definitely way too big for the bed. I'm not even sure how I came up with this measurement. I guess I was trying to match it to the couch, but didn't really work out. Anyway, here is my vampire themed Halloween Polly Pocket and I hope you like it. Holy Halloween, that was a lot of work. But I loved it because I haven't made miniatures in a while and I love hand sculpting. So that was very engaging for me as an artist and hopefully you loved it as well. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.